Hi, I'm Lorian Vaudour, and today I'm going to take you through the steps of cooking the delicious Canadian Thanksgiving recipe that I've created, the maple sugar pie. So for the first step, we're going to be doing the sweet pastry. And for this, I'm using plain flour and rye flour, just to give a bit of a nutty flavor from it. We have some maple sugar and some really nice and cold butter to go into the food processor. And I'm going to whisk that until we get some nice sandy textures from it. So it's about 20 seconds and then you get no lump of butter into it. It's all blending, nice sandy texture. And we're going to now crack an egg on top just to finish with the rest. And for this bit, I'm just going to pulse it so I don't leave it too long. You want all the ingredients to come together, so I'm just going to tuck it back in a little bit. There we go, we got everything's come together. We're just going to put it onto the worktop. I'm rather trying to work it too much. You just want to push it together into nice flat part. And now we've put it all together. We're going to wrap it into cling film. And for now, we're going to put it for two hours in the fridge so we get to have a nice firm pastry and we get to rest the gluten so it doesn't get too elastic when we, uh, when we want to roll it. So for the second part, while the pastry is chilling, we're going to do the maple filling all in the processor again. We're going to put some eggs. We're going to put the oats into it and the breadcrumb. So I use sourdough breadcrumb to do a good bit of texture from it. And we got some salt flakes to go in. Also three tablespoons of double cream to go into it. Melted butter and plenty of maple syrup. And we're going to whiz all this together. And once it's all mixed, we're going to put it into the bowl with some chopped pecan nut as well. And that's going to give extra bit of crunch and extra bit of nuttiness to the filling. And for this, I've taken the idea of the treacle tart, which I've subsidized for the pure Canadian maple syrup. So you get a lot more depth and a lot more flavor from the syrup. So for this, I'm just stirring the nuts through the mix. And as you can see, it's a little bit runny, but once you're gonna put it in the tarted case, it's gonna all set together and it's gonna be nice and gooey. So here's, I got my lined pastry cases. And uh, one of the tricks I found over the years is you can get those rings with little holes into it. You can see this will allow all the air to go through and it's gonna be easier to take out and it's gonna give you a perfect edge on the side of the pie. So the next step, now we've got our maple filling and we're gonna fill them up probably halfway through because we're gonna keep some space for the chocolate ganache. So as you can see, you wanna make sure that you get a good mix of the crumbs, the nuts and everything. And now we're gonna put in the oven until they get nice golden brown. So for the next step, I've decided to use the Anzac biscuit which is oaty, coconutty, and with a mapley flavor, is going to be delicious. For this, we're going to put all the dry ingredients into the mixer. So we've got a flour, desiccated coconuts, oats, and we've got some maple sugar here. And we're going to use a drizzle of maple syrup to go through it, a pinch of sea salt, melted butter, It's a really easy recipe to do. Basically, you just got to put it all in a mixer. It's all going to come together and just let it chill after that. So we got some bicarbonates of soda, which we need to react with some hot water. And I'm just going to put a tablespoon of boiling water to it. 
and mix it all in there. Make sure to keep it on a low speed as you don't want everything to explode everywhere. The bicarb is actually going to kind of puff up a little bit uh, the old biscuits and it's going to create those little pockets of air inside it. When you get the butter cooking, it's like a hobnob. It's the best, best kind of texture you can get. It's that crunchy, buttery, nutty, and I love it. So this is it. Just by looking at it, it looks a little bit crumbly, but then you want to check by if you squeeze it a little bit in your hand, it comes together and you get all that nice sticky and buttery dough. So we're going to roll it in between two sheets of paper. Uh, you want it nice and thin, so we're going to get a good texture from it and set it in the fridge afterwards. The thing I love about this recipe is, uh, is working with product like maple syrup is uh, you get to have something which is more natural and you get a lot more flavor uh, intensify and you don't need to use as much than a regular recipe. And now we're going to set it in the fridge for about 20 minutes. Now the maple pies are ready. Uh, we're going to let them cool down for about half an hour naturally. So now the Anzac uh, biscuits have set nice and firm in the fridge. We're going to use a pastry cutter. Uh, the idea is we want to get the biscuit to sit on top of the tart nice and neat. So we're going to cut it and we're going to cook on the same silicone mat that we used previously for the tart. Same thing is just to make sure that we get an even cooking and no air pockets get trapped underneath. And now we're going to put them in the oven until they get nice and golden brown. So now we've got the Anzac in the, in the oven. We're going to start on a ganache. And for this, I'm going to boil some uh, maple syrup into the pan, bring it to the boil, and then we're going to add the hot cream and butter into it. You want to make sure it's going to look really foamy, and you want to try to get that foam to be nice and thick, and you're going to see the colors intensify, and that's going to give you the idea of how strong the caramel gets from the maple syrup. And now you can see the foam thicken and the colors is uh, becoming nice, dark and brown. And we're gonna add the hot butter and cream mixed together. It smells delicious. So you just wanna deglaze this and don't leave it boil too long because otherwise it's gonna give you a caramel which is gonna be a little bit too firm for the ganache. As soon as you've seen the caramel dissolve with the cream, you just want to pour it onto the chocolate straight away. Important things with the ganache is you've got to create an emulsion. And for this, we're going to start with a whisk. And you're going to notice the mix might split, but we're going to finish with a stick blender and that's going to give the perfect finish. I'm going to add a pinch of sea salt and that's going to give the little crystals inside the ganache. It's going to intensify all the flavors. And you want to make sure to get the whole mix mixed properly and then you can see how glossy the ganache is. And now that we got a perfect emulsion with the ganache, we're going to scrape all the sides and I'm going to make sure to cling film on top to contact just to make sure that we don't get skin forming while cooling down. And you want to push the cling film nice and gently. And for the optimum uh, crystallization on a ganache, you would leave that overnight at room temperature, or you can just put it in the fridge for about half an hour to firm up. So now I've got a chocolate ganache was set in my piping bag, and I'm gonna pipe it on top of the tarted case. And you wanna try to be nice and generous. So when you can press the Anzac biscuit, you can see as I push the ganache comes out on the side. It's such a satisfying moment. I love making those individual tarts and I think for Canadian Thanksgiving is a perfect way to share with friends and family and all the loved ones you got around you. And to finish it up, I like to put a kernel of clotted cream on top and a little sprinkle of Canadian maple flakes. Et voilà.
So this is it. This is my version of the maple sugar pie. We've got maple sweet pastry, sticky maple filling, maple caramel and milk chocolate ganache, crunchy biscuit, dollop of floated cream. I hope you all enjoyed it and please follow Maple Canada UK on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter for more recipe inspiration. Happy Thanksgiving everybody, time to tuck in.